Okay, so let's be serious for a second. Samsung needs to stop doing this. Let's go ahead and talk about it. First things first, I've been using the all new Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra since, you know, since it dropped, right? As soon as I got my phone, I put in my main SIM card and it became my main phone. And then I moved my second SIM card out of my 15 Pro Max, my iPhone 15 Pro Max, into my S23 Ultra. But anyway, so Samsung is making it so that they can stop innovating eventually. They make this whole game of which is the better phone not fun anymore. It's no longer fun, right? Samsung made the S23 Ultra. It was the phone of the year last year. You know, it was better than any phone ever made, ever. So we knew that and no phone was ever worthy of competing against the S23 Ultra. And despite that, Samsung went ahead and made the S24 Ultra, but they just made it so much better than the S23 Ultra, which then begs the question, the other manufacturers, are they competing to meet the S23 Ultra or the S24 Ultra, which is better than the S23 Ultra by miles? Which is why I'm saying they're gonna be ahead by themselves and they're gonna get bored and then they're gonna stop innovating. I'm certainly hoping that they don't, but it was fun when there was that little edge where Apple or the iPhone has a little bit of an edge or, and then Samsung comes back with a little bit of an edge and then Apple, but now Samsung is just flying ahead, making it impossible to catch up with it. It's just my way of saying that this phone, I don't know. I'm sure you've seen a number of videos out there telling you how good this phone is. It's a masterpiece. You know, I'm speechless when I wanna talk about this phone. There are people who ask me about this phone and I don't know what to tell them. It, it's so good. It's just so freaking good. I, I really don't know what to say, but you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and share my experience with you, what it's been like using this phone here. I'm gonna try not to repeat a lot of the things that you've heard. So many people already calling it the phone of the year. And I think it's gonna be the phone of the year. I don't know how Apple is gonna beat this. Apple is still trying to beat this one here, so. Let's see how that goes. Anyways, so we have that massive 6.8 inches display. And this time it's a flat display. If you know, if you've been watching me for a while, then you probably know that I prefer curved displays. In fact, I used to say that this was the perfect medium, the perfect display, because it's a mix of curve, you know, and flat, right? With the S23 Ultra. But I didn't realize that Samsung had a way of making a flat display just feel better than a curved display to people like myself who prefer curved displays. It's, it's fantastic. The bezels, you know, now you have uniform bezels. If you remember with the S23 Ultra and even the S22 Ultra, you have a tiny chin at the bottom there, but now you have uniform bezels and they're so freaking thin. On top of that, Samsung figured, you know what? Let's push the brightness too the highest we can. So they went ahead and bloated this bad boy with 2,600 nits of brightness. To those of you not really familiar with the technical jargon, that is extremely bright. So you never will encounter any issues, you know, using your phone or squinting to try to see what's what on your phone. I've used this phone under direct sunlight and it's been fantastic. It's like, there's no sun, but I'm skipping steps here. Let's go ahead and just talk about the physical attributes of the phone, right? Now you have titanium. It's a lot more boxy. You know, it's a very boxy phone. In fact, this is one of the things that I think could be considered a negative thing about this phone is that to people like myself, this is the perfect phone. It's a big phone. I love big phones and it's boxy. It sits and digs. It truly digs in the palm of your hand. You can't really drop this phone when you hold it, right? It feels solid. It's a solid build. So because of my large hands, this is the perfect phone for me. But I feel some people who have smaller hands may not like it, which is why I'm saying the shape and the boxier shape, the size of the phone might be a con to some people, but to me, it is not. It feels a lot more premium. I don't know what it is about this phone. It's just so, so very premium, so, so more premium than what you have with the S23 Ultra, which by the way, was already feeling like a very premium phone. And this orange, oh gosh, I love this orange. I am so happy I went 
for this color. Of course, this is an exclusive color off of the website. By the way, I will have some links in the description. If you wanna go ahead and order yourself either this or any of the other Samsung devices, I will have those links in the description so that you can take advantage of some of the discount that accompany those links there. But anyway, so going to the inside now, we have this bad boy loaded with the latest flagship from Qualcomm, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. This is made specifically, tailor-made, for the S24 Ultra. It takes it to new heights. So it would be redundant for me to tell you that this is so powerful, this is so good. I'm just gonna tell you that if there's anything that this phone cannot do, no other phone out there can do it. This is so freaking powerful. It flies through things like I don't know what to say. And of course, loaded with just nothing but top specs. So that dynamic AMOLED display, you know, high refresh rate at up to 120 hertz. It's LTPO, right? The display is an LTPO. So you have the refresh rate bouncing anywhere from one all the way to 120 hertz. It just makes that user experience very enjoyable. Super smooth, right? It's buttery smooth. You know, multitasking here is top notch. It's always been good. You have Samsung Dex here to those of you who are not familiar, it's just a way to use this as your computer, essentially. You know, you would just have it extend to an actual monitor and be able to have a desktop and work on it as if you were working on a computer. Well, might as well, because the phone is powerful enough to pretty much act as a computer. This is everything that you need on the phone. I really don't know how they're gonna outdo themselves with the S24 Ultra, S25 Ultra next year, right? Which goes back to my initial point. They're moving so fast that it, you know, I'm worried, wondering what they're gonna do next, right? Can they just making the game not fun anymore? But anyways, that's just that. And of course, the cameras. This year we have two telephoto cameras, and of course you have the wide and the ultra wide, that same, you know, crazy zoom where you can zoom from really, really far away, still available here. Take pictures of the moon if you want to. You can still do that here. But most importantly, what Samsung did this year is they made the video even better. Most people have praised, you know, the video coming out of iPhones. Now, you have something that matches it. And on top of that, it has so many other things not available on the iPhone. But anyway, so pictures, videos, all of that good stuff, top notch. I'm not gonna dive into it. It's redundant. I'm pretty sure you've seen a million videos praising this here. And of course, the shutter speed, it's good. You know, it's really good. So when you take pictures with it, fantastic dynamic wrench. Another thing that I'm gonna give Samsung credit for is the fact that over the years, Dev, you know, you know, they've brought down the saturation level a couple notches. In fact, this year, or at least pictures that I'm taking using this phone seem to be even closer to the natural setting of the picture, right? So closer to what you would get taking pictures using an iPhone, right? And I really like that they did that, right? So it's not as synthetic as what we've seen before. They've definitely brought that down, but still very colorful, still very vibrant, I guess is the word that I wanna use here. So again, fantastic job on that. In terms of the battery, of course, Samsung kept that same 5,000 milliamp battery. So if you know a thing or two about Qualcomm flagship chipsets, you know, the past couple of years, they've been making these specifically or adjusting these chipsets to fit or to optimize the way the Samsung Galaxy S line works, right? It works extremely well with it. Battery life here has been fantastic. I'm getting about eight hours of screen on. Actually, a little bit more than that because the phone itself, I'm finding myself charging it almost two days into that same battery. That chipset just does a fantastic job managing battery. It's very well optimized. The phone itself is just so very well optimized. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the physical features that we have here. Of course, the speaker is slightly different this year. It's just one flat cut out here as opposed to the grill that we had on the S23 Ultra. Then you have USB type C port, of course, and you have a SIM card. And at the bottom, you do have the S Pen, which is something not available on I can't think of a competitor to this phone that has a stylus. 
right? So it's good, always good to have this. Again, I've said this a million times. I don't necessarily find myself using this every day, but a few times when I use it, it's generally to sign documents really quick and it definitely comes in handy. And I put it right back in. And the reason I don't, you know, use it as often is simply because I always have a tablet with me. But to those of you who need a stylus or who need a S Pen, this will definitely come in handy. I know a lot of people praise that. Out of all of the things that were different this year, one that I want to highlight is just AI, right? That's the new trend. That's what everyone is doing. Google, everybody's, you know, jumping on the AI, you know, bandwagon. Obviously with Galaxy AI, Samsung is trying to be part of that new trend. And it works pretty well here. I've used Google Translate. Some of you may know that I speak multiple languages and I've used this and it works well. It translates very accurately and not literal translation, right? It actually uses the context and gives you the good translation, not the literal translation. And I was very impressed by that. And you also have what everyone is talking about. The fact that with a circle, you'll be able to search any image that you are looking at. So you could be scrolling through images or you could take pictures of things and just circle and it would launch a Google search for it. And of course, this is an op This is a feature that we actually see being implemented on some of the Google devices. But anyways, there are a number of things that accompany, you know, Galaxy AI, including even call screening, right? So there's an option here where when someone calls, you can actually communicate with the person using text, right? You text and then of course it will tell the person. You can actually customize those responses and really make them tailor or make them very specific so I can repeat the same thing to the person. But anyways, I'm not gonna keep going with this. Let me just go ahead and give you my take here after a quick summary. So build quality, I mean, it's the best phone. It's, it's such a beautiful phone. I have nothing to say. And I know it's a, you know, it's subjective. You will like what you like and I'm gonna like what I like, but I think it's the best looking phone on the market right now. In terms of performance, top level, 12 gigs of RAM. I don't know if I even mentioned that. You have different configs here, 12 gigs of RAM and you start with 256 gigs of internal storage and you have 512 and then one terabyte, 12 gigs of RAM across that. Now, one thing that I don't like is the fact that Samsung bumped the price up to $1,300. Now, when I look at some of the things that it has to offer, I'm like, I can understand that price, but still $1,300 is not cheap. But anyway, so you have that display, amazing display here. Nothing comes even close to this. Of course, USB type C port, fast charge, and the fingerprint sensor, by the way, the fingerprint sensor here is so fast, it's so quick. Right, it's so instantaneous, as soon as you touch it, it almost feels as if it's not even scanning your finger. But as soon as you try to get somebody else to try to unlock your phone, it doesn't work. So it's very accurate and it's really, really fast. Again, something very impressive. Overall, I'm just gonna say, this is the best phone of the year. I'm just gonna say it like this, it is. I, I don't know what else to say. Other phones are still trying to compete to beat the S23 Ultra and then Samsung went ahead and pushed the envelope even further out with this guy here. Anyways, that's just my take on this. I'm gonna continue using the phone and then I'm gonna share, you know, any of the issues that I encounter or any of the good things that I encounter with you guys as time goes by. Of course, I'm gonna pit this against the S23 Ultra, against the iPhone 15 Pro Max here, against the, I still have my Pixel 8 Pro, we have a lot of work, so look forward to all of those videos. Let me know what any questions you may have about this phone here. Don't forget to like the video, share if you know anyone who'll be interested, of course. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Hit the subscribe button there, I truly appreciate that. Let me know what you think of this phone. Do you agree? Do you disagree? If you disagree, that's fine. Let's have that conversation, I love it. I'm gonna catch you in the comment section like I always do. I am also going to catch you in the next video. Up until that next video, of course, as always, stay safe out there.